Hey guys, what is up? It is SSD Middleman here with Guides for Us All, and today we're going to be checking out all of the spear weapons in Dark Souls 2. This video is going to be a little bit different than all of the previous ones, but nevertheless, let's get started with the spear. To get the spear, you head over to Blacksmith Lenegrast in Majula, and you can buy it from him for 1400 souls. This is the most standard spear weapon in the game, as you could probably tell from its name. Now the info screen reads, a standard spear, spears allow one to attack a foe from a distance and whilst holding up a shield. Thrusting attacks are effective even against opponents with strong defense, but they have a narrow point of contact and won't effectively break through a shielded defense. That very effectively sums up the positives and the negatives of the spears category. This spear isn't anything special at all. At regular plus 10, you will have 210 physical damage with a C scaling in strength and a B scaling in dexterity. Not a horrible starting weapon, but there are better spears to come. Now the Partisan. To get the Partisan, head over to Weaponsmith Ornifex and she will sell it to you for 300 souls. Its info screen reads, A spear with a broad blade. The blade is widened and given extra weight to allow for slashing. The broader attacks of the Partisan, however, make it less effective in narrow spaces. Now the Partisan is one of the better spears. At regular plus 10, you'll have 230 physical damage, an E scaling in strength, and an S scaling in dexterity. The spear is obviously very good with high dexterity. You can infuse it, but its S scaling will reduce to an A scaling. Now, I'm no professional in the infusion department, so I won't make too many suggestions throughout this video, but this is an all-around very effective spear, especially if you have high dexterity, and I'd recommend trying it out. Next up is the pike. To get the pike, head to Earthen Peak. Before the second bonfire, you will cross a bridge. Take a right after crossing and go past the cauldron located in that room. Follow the passageway until you reach a dead end with a chest containing the pike. Now the pike is a very average spear weapon. Its info screen reads, a spear with an extended pole offers a very long reach even for a spear, allowing for attacks from safer distances. Traditionally a weapon of regimental rather than single combat due to its unwieldiness. However, if you can manage to effectively step around an opponent, they will hardly have a chance to hit back. The pike does decent damage at regular plus 10. You'll have 190 physical damage a C scaling in strength, and an A scaling in dexterity. The thing that sets this apart from the rest of the spears is its longer range and its running R1 attack. First off, it has the longest reach of any spear in the game. In addition, instead of the normal running spear attack, it will use the Lance's R1 attack, charging forward and hitting your opponent several times. This is super useful in PvP for mixing up your moveset, confusing your opponents. All things considered, it's a pretty decent weapon with a slightly different moveset. Now on to the Winged Spear. To get the Winged Spear, head over to Steady Hand McDuff and he will sell this to you for 2,500 souls. The Winged Spear's info screen reads, A spear with winged lugs, longer than standard spears, allowing for attacks from further away. Thrusting attacks are effective, even against opponents with high defense, but they have a narrow point of contact and won't effectively break through a shield of defense. An info screen pretty similar to the regular spear. Now the Winged Spear is very similar to the Partisan in statistics. You'll have 240 physical damage with an E scaling in strength and an A scaling in dexterity. It deals a nice amount of damage in combat, but isn't truly anything special. You might be better off using the Partisan if you have high dexterity due to its S scaling in dexterity. Now on to the Stone Soldier Spear. To get the Stone Soldier Spear, simply kill the Stone Soldiers located inside of Drangleic Castle until they drop one. The Stone Soldier Spear's info screen reads, Spear of the Castle Stone Soldiers. Sir Velstat could always be found at the King's side and followed him upon his exit. The knights in his service waited patiently for his return until they turned to stone. The first thing you might notice about the Stone Soldier Spear is the fact that it is nearly 100% identical to the Pike. They both have 190 physical damage with a C scaling in strength and an A scaling in dexterity. They also both have the longest reach of any spear in the game. The only differences are the fact that the Stone Soldier Spear weighs one less at 7.0 weight, the running attack, and that it requires you to have 16 strength and 20 dexterity to wield as opposed to the 12 and 16 requirements of the pike. In conclusion, I'd say the Stone Soldier Spear is average as well and isn't anything special. If you were to consider which one you should use more, I'd recommend the pike as it has the different running attack. Now onto the Silver Black Spear. To get the Silver Black Spear, you'll have to kill Grave Wardens located in either the Earthen Peak or Undead Crypt until they drop it. The info screen for this weapon reads, A Silver Black Spear imbued with the power of Dark. The Grave Wardens vowed to ensure the tranquility of those who slumber in the Undead Crypt. 
If one dares disturb them, the Grave Wardens make no allowance for stature or riches and will readily bury them along with the others. Silver Black Spear statistics are interesting. At regular plus 10, it will deal 150 physical damage, 110 dark damage with a C scaling in strength, dexterity, and dark. Its regular infusion is pretty effective at dealing a bunch of damage per hit. Another option would be to infuse it with dark to get more dark damage and a B scaling in your dark as well. You'll have your other scalings reduced to D, but depending on your levels, this could make a huge difference in damage when you infuse it with dark. In conclusion, I really like the Silver Black Spear, and it's especially useful if your magical statistics are high. Now we check out the Hide Spear. To get the Hide Spear, you'll need to head to the Lost Bastille. On the path from No Man's Wharf, you will see the Hide Knight that you must kill for his spear. The info screen reads, a spear originating in Hide. A special alloy makes it very durable. The composition of the alloy of these spears remains a mystery, but in Drangleic, the attempt to imitate it resulted in the similar brad and steel. In my opinion, the Hide Spear is one of the best choices in the spear category. At regular plus 10, it will deal 210 physical damage, 100 lightning damage, has a descaling in strength, a C scaling scaling in dexterity and a C scaling in lightning damage. It's a pretty good idea to infuse this weapon with lightning as you will only lose 9 physical damage but gain 44 lightning damage. Since this weapon is automatically imbued with lightning, it will be very effective against the plethora of enemies that are weak to lightning in Dark Souls 2. Overall, this is one of my favorite spear weapons and you can get it early on in a playthrough which makes it even better. Now on to Pate's Spear. To get Pate's Spear, you must either kill him once you encounter him in the Forest of the Fallen Giants, or complete all of his dialogue there after escaping the trap, summon him to help you with the last giant boss fight, then meet him at Earth and Peak where he will give you his weapon, armor, and the Ring of Thorns. You can also get it through another quest line, but that's an even bigger pain in the ass. Its info screen reads, A long spear wielded by Pate. This appears to be a very ordinary spear, but seems to have accumulated power over the course of countless battles. It is not always advisable to stand out, especially if you have something to hide. Pate's Spear, at first glance, looks very basic, but is a very effective weapon overall. At regular plus 5, it will deal 270 physical damage, has an E scaling in strength, and a B scaling in dexterity. In addition, its running attack, much like the pike, is the lance's running attack, giving it a nice variety in moveset. This weapon is above average, and with high dexterity, you'll deal a nice amount of damage per hit. The only real downside is that you must upgrade it with Twinkling Titanite. Now onto one of the most interesting weapons in the game, the Channeler's Trident. To get this, you will need to head to the Crow's Nest, located in Things Betwixt, and trade either Petrified Somethings, Smooth and Silky Stones, or Small Smooth and Silky Stones until you get this. Its info screen reads, A trident wielded by an old sorcerer. The tip is sharpened so smoothly that it suggests a degree of madness. Use two-handed strong attacks to perform a power channeling dance, the madness of which boosts the morale of nearby allies. First off, let's check out the stats. At regular plus 10, it will deal 240 physical damage with an E scaling in strength and an A scaling in dexterity. The thing that makes this weapon so unique is its R2 attacks. When two-handing this weapon, using R2 will cause you to perform a dance that will buff all friendly allies near you. This will give them a 25% damage boost for about 15 seconds. This is especially useful in PvP or in situations where you need to summon somebody to help you defeat a powerful boss. The weapon's one-handed R2 attack is also very good. It will spin while hitting the opponent for an additional 3 hits, 4 hits in total. This is very effective when the weapon is imbued with poison as it will stack up the poison buildup three additional times. The only downside to this is that each of those hits can be parried and the attack takes a bit longer than a normal attack so if you miss this you'll be open to backstabs or regular attacks. Overall this weapon is fantastic, especially if you're going to be playing with friends. And now, the Spitfire Spear. To get the Spitfire Spear, you'll need to trade Weaponsmith Ornifex the Guardian Dragon Soul plus 1500 souls to get it. Its info screen reads, A spear said to have been forged in Aldia. Contains the power of a great flame which is unleashed in a strong attack. The mysterious Lord Aldia secluded himself inside a manor to conduct various experiments. Those invited to the manor disappeared, replaced over time with malformed beasts that formed its halls. The Spitfire Spear is a very fun weapon to use for so many reasons which I'll get into in a moment. First, let's check out the stats. At regular plus 5, this will deal 160 physical damage, 120 fire damage with an E scaling in strength and dexterity, plus a C scaling in fire damage. I'd say the damage on the spear is around average, maybe a bit above average, although the truly great things about this weapon are not shown in the stats. If you use its R2 attack, you will shoot a fire projectile in the direction you're pointing. I absolutely love when weapons have an effect like this. It's incredibly useful in PvP for getting a hit in when your opponents are not expecting it. This is also one of only three boss weapons that has power stand compatible. If you use the special attack while you're power stancing it, it will shoot two projectiles since you'll technically be doing two strong attacks with spears. This weapon is a ton of fun to use and adds some variety to your gameplay. 
Next up is the Dragon Slayer Spear. To get the Dragon Slayer Spear, you'll need to trade the old Dragon Slayer Soul plus 1500 regular souls to Weaponsmith Ornifex. Its info screen reads, A Rand Sir, forged from the soul of the old Dragon Slayer. The Spear of the Knight known as the Dragon Slayer was imbued with the power of lightning and shattered the stone scales of dragons. A strong attack unleashes its latent power. At regular plus 5, you'll be dealing 180 physical damage, 105 lightning damage with an E scaling in strength, an A scaling in dexterity, and a C scaling in lightning. This is one of the best spear weapons in my opinion, not only because of its high damage and good scaling, but because it also has a special attack. When using the Dragon Slayer Spear's R2 attack, you will not only thrust forward with the spear, but also shoot a bolt of lightning out of it. As you may have guessed, I love when weapons have special attacks like this, as it gives them a more varied moveset. Thanks to its lightning damage, this weapon will also be very effective against most enemies in the game. Plus, its special attack sets it apart from the Hide Spear that we checked out earlier. Now onto the Gargoyle Bident. To get the Gargoyle Bident, trade the Belfry Gargoyle Soul plus 1500 normal souls to Strait of Olaphis. Its info screen reads, A two-pronged spear that imitates a weapon mentioned in an ancient text. Gargoyles are said to guard castles and forts from ill fortune, and they have appeared in many forms in all of the great lands throughout history. Some of them are so meticulously crafted that they look as if they might come to life. This spear's stats are quite basic, which is strange in the spear category. At regular plus 5, you'll be dealing 260 physical damage with an A scaling in strength. That's it. This weapon is a very basic strength-based spear with nice damage. There's not much else I can say about it. It's a solid weapon choice for strength builds and is fairly easy to acquire. Next up is the Pilgrim Spawn Tune. To get the Pilgrim Spawn Tune, start off at the upper floor bonfire in the Crown of the Old Iron King DLC. Follow the path I go on until you reach a room full of elevators. Hop on the one to the right and hop off about halfway down and you will find a chest containing the Pilgrim Spawn Tune. Its info screen reads, a spawn tune used by warriors on pilgrimage. Rather worn from the long journey, it is doubtless seen. A spear which also doubles as a catalyst for sorceries, making it an ideal choice for light-footed pilgrims. Let's check out the stats, which I think are pretty nice. 180 physical damage, 180 dark damage, plus a C scaling in both sorcery and dark. As you might have guessed, thanks to the description of the weapon, you can actually cast spells and hexes with this, as well as attack physically. I love this effect so much. Its moveset is absurdly varied, thanks to this ability, and will keep your actions very unpredictable in PvP. In PvP, PvE, it retains its usefulness as it allows you to keep your distance from enemies but still have attacks when the enemies are close. Not much else to say about this weapon, I'm sure there are a ton of fun combos you can make up with this, and I just love this weapon. Last but not least, we have Yorg's Spear. To get this, you'll need to trade the Soul of Sin, the Slumbering Dragon, plus 14,000 souls to Weaponsmith Ornifex. Its info screen reads, Spear wielded by Sir Yorg during his invasion of the Sanctum City. After his defeat of the Sunken King, Sir Yorg pierced Sin, the Sleeping Dragon, with the Spear to claim its blood. But Sin immediately awoke, spewing a poisonous fog that blanketed the city in death, and Sir Yorg disappeared into the Eternal Sanctum. This weapon is just insane for so many reasons. First, let's check out the stats. At regular plus 5, you will deal 300 physical damage per hit with a B scaling in both strength and dexterity. Right off the bat, this weapon has great damage output and it benefits greatly from infusion. If, for example, you decide to infuse it with lightning damage, you will end up with 189 physical damage, 281 lightning damage with your scalings reduced to C. That's 470 damage in total, not taking into account weaknesses or scaling. The other amazing thing about this weapon is the fact that its moveset is out of control. I won't go into every attack you can do, but it uses attacks from the movesets of spears, lances, great swords, twin blades, curved swords, and halberds. There is no way an opponent can predict what you will do next while you're using Yorg's spear. That fact, coupled with the fantastic damage of this weapon, makes me crown Yorg's spear as the best spear in Dark Souls 2. Now just one question, how the hell did Sir Yorg die when he had this? And that concludes my evaluation of all the spears in Dark Souls 2. Let me know what you guys think about this slightly new format for the videos. I'll continue using this one if you enjoyed it. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like rating down below and subscribe to see some more videos in the future. If you'd like updates on videos and other strange posts, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Guides for Us All. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.